<clears throat> Welcome folks, Jason here with today's lesson on smart objects in Photoshop. What are they, what do they do, and how incredibly magic they really are. So to start off with, what I want to do is I want to show you why smart objects are so fantastic. Here, over in my layers panel, I have a layer sandwich, which is just simply merged layers all together, so nothing special. Here is the same sandwich converted to a smart object, and we're going to show you how to convert to a smart object so quickly and easily. But first, what I want to do is I want to show you the benefits of having a normal layer and then a smart object. I'm going to go and select the normal layer, and I'm going to do my Command or Control T for transform, and I'm going to scale this object down. And once I scale it down, I'm going to click return and set my object. So there's my raster layer. Now I'm going to select my smart object. I'm going to repeat the same process. Now one thing you'll notice when you have a smart object and you do a transform, you're going to see this X in the middle, which tells you this is something different, but it's something good. So I'm going to perform the same transform. I'm going to scale that down and hit return or click OK. Now I'm going to go back to my raster layer and I'm going to scale that back up using my Command or Control T. And I'm going to scale it back up, and you'll see that we have severely compromised the quality of that image by scaling it down and then scaling it back up. It's now blurry and it's completely damaged. But when I do the same thing to a smart object, it doesn't lose its quality. Because what a smart object is, is basically a protected object. So when I'm working on any type of composition, I pretty much use smart objects for everything. So how do you go through and make a smart object? Simply right click on your layer and go down to convert to smart object. That's all you have to do. It's that simple, folks. That's it. You've converted this to a smart object to keep it safe from any type of manipulation. Now, if I grab my paintbrush, you'll notice that I can't paint directly on this layer. If I grab my eraser, I can't erase directly on this layer because this layer is now protected. Being a smart object, I can still go through and I can still do my transform and I can still rotate and I can warp and distort and do all these things to a smart object that I can do with a normal layer, but it's protected. Smart objects can be super helpful when you're dealing with lots of layers. I'm going to select this entire set of layers and I'm going to turn my entire layer sandwich into a smart object. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert this whole thing to a smart object. Now it may look like I've just merged all these layers together. Well I did but not in a destructive way. We're going to show you how this works. If I'm working on this layer sandwich now, it's a lot easier to work with with one single layer. I can transform this, I can rotate this, I can do whatever I want to with it, but I can't directly go in and edit or manipulate this. But here's what's super cool. If I would like to go in and I would like to edit this smart object, which by the way, it's still a set of layers, I'm going to click on this icon here, and double click. What this is going to do is it's going to open up this smart object inside Photoshop. It is now a temporary Photoshop file, and you can see that it's right here. This is my bread copy that I have open, and this is a .psb file. PSB files are for files that are over 2 gigabytes in size, or something that is a smart object. Now, this is inside of Photoshop right now. Okay, So I open this up. This is not a file that I've created and saved someplace. This is me just clicking on that layer sandwich, smart object. Now I can go in and manipulate this entire object and I can change this inside my smart object. When I'm done changing my smart object here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to save it. And then I'm going to close this smart object. And when I go back to my original file, it's going to make that update for me. I didn't have to worry about where I saved this smart object file because it's saved directly in the Photoshop file itself. Here's another interesting thing. I'm going to duplicate this smart object. And I'm going to do this by going under the layer menu. And I like to do new layer via copy, which is Command or Control J. 
So here's my copy of my object. And now if I go in and I edit this object by double clicking on the smart object here, I'm going to move all this stuff so that we can see a pronounced change in this. I'm going to save this smart object file. I'm going to close it. And you'll notice that both of these files update inside my original file. And the reason why is because I made a direct copy of this smart object. I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to go back and I'm going to duplicate this one, but I'm going to do it in a different way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go under layer and I'm going to go under smart objects is new smart object via copy. When I create a new smart object via copy, I now have something that is uniquely independent. So these are no longer a direct copy of each other. They are both unique instances. And what that means is if I go in and I edit one of these smart objects and I specifically make a change, save and close this smart object, you'll notice that that new smart object via copy is its own completely independent file it is no longer linked together. So if I do a command or control J to create a new layer, they will be linked together and any edits made will be made to any and all of those instances. But if I go in and do layer smart object, new smart object via copy, that's going to give me a different instance of that object. I can work with smart objects as well by not just converting something inside of Photoshop to a smart object, but I can actually open something as a smart object itself. Instead of just going under File Open, I'm going to choose Open as Smart Object, and I'm going to bring in this label that I've created, because I'd like to put this on my Apple. So I'm opening this as a smart object. So I've got this, and I'm going to right click on this, and I'm going to duplicate this layer from where I'm coming from into my Apple layer here, which is one way of duplicating it. I can also drag this over too. And there is my smart object layer. Now with this, I can do my transform and I can make this any size that I want. I can rotate this, I can scale it. I can even come in here and I can warp it if I wanna wrap this around my Apple and make it look like this is kind of being stuck to the Apple here and making that look good. I notice that this looks a little bit too crisp when it's sitting there on the apple. So one of the wonderful things is I can go in and I can apply a filter to this. So maybe I go in and I would like to create a slight blur on this. So I'm gonna use my blur and I'm gonna use Gaussian blur. By having this be a smart object, I am not directly affecting that image. I am not actually putting a blur that is directly on this image, which would then be destructive. What it's doing here, because it's a smart object, is it's actually applying a smart filter. And this Gaussian blur, which would normally apply to my rasterized layer, and then now gives me the ability to come back in here, and if I'd like to edit this, I can simply double click on the layer here, and I can adjust the amount of filter that I have applied to this label in order to be able to edit this. So this is completely non-destructive. It's beautiful. So if I decided to do any other type of filter on this as well, maybe I want to go in and add a little bit of noise to this to kind of disturb the surface a bit to kind of give a little bit more texture. I can add some noise to this. And if I add too much noise, not a problem because again, it's a smart filter. So I can go back. I've added too much noise. I can double click and I can dial this down add a little bit of character to this sticker to kind of match the noise going on with the apple. There it is. Now here's another way that we can use a smart filter. I've got a shirt and I'd like to put a logo on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to choose file, open a smart object, and I'm going to bring in this illustrator file. This is a cactus that I created in illustrator. Yes, I can open it up in Photoshop as a smart object to preserve the editing capabilities of this illustrator file. There is my smart object. It comes in there. I'm going to duplicate this layer so that it ends up on my shirt and click OK and then switch over to my shirt. And there is my smart object right there. I'm going to transform this and scale it down as a logo on the shirt. But I notice that the little spikes of the cactus are not showing up on the shirt. 
I'm going to double click on my smart object, which is going to then go ahead and open up this stored illustrator file. Now it's not opening up the original one. It's opening up the one that is inside of Photoshop right now. So I never have to worry about my original artwork that's stored on my hard drive being edited. This is editing the placed file in Photoshop. Here, I'm going to change the spikes to a much lighter green. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to close this file. I'm going to go back into Photoshop and you'll notice how it's going in and updated itself instantly. I didn't even have to go in and re-import this. It made that change automatically. And now if I wanted to do any sort of filter, I could always go into the filter menu and I could do any type of filter here, knowing that I wouldn't destroy this smart object at all. Now what happens if I simply opened up this cactus normally? So I'm just going to open up this cactus in Photoshop. I'm not going to say open as a smart object. It's just going to rasterize this entire thing normally. Now I don't, when I open up this as a raster file, I don't have the ability to take this file and go back into Illustrator because I didn't open this up as a smart object and store all the information inside. But if I did do this, I could always go in and I could always convert this to a smart object by simply saying convert to a smart object. Now, if you forget to do that and you go in and you apply a filter, say you want to go in and apply a filter on here, you'll notice that one of the things that we have in the filter menu is convert for smart filters. And this is another way to convert something to a smart object before you apply a filter. Convert for smart filters is just a quick step of going in and saying, hey, turn this into a smart object before I apply a filter. So it says, there we go. When I do this, it's going to convert it to a smart object. There it is. Now when I go in and I apply a filter to this, if I do in and go in and do a Gaussian blur and blur the whole thing, you can see that I can blur it substantially. And had I done this on a normal layer, I couldn't go back and undo this without undoing everything. But now I can simply turn on and turn off that smart filter because this is a smart object. So here I have a label that I created in Photoshop, yet I created this type in Illustrator. And when I was making this, I then opened up my Illustrator file as a smart object. So I went under File, Open as Smart Object, and brought this in as a smart object so it retains its vector capabilities. If you have any Illustrator file and you want to retain those editing capabilities, always open this as a smart object here. Don't open it up as a Photoshop file and then convert it. So now if I wanted to convert this or make any edits to this Illustrator file that is now embedded in this Photoshop file, I can double click on this. It will open up the placed file in here and I can make any changes to this whatsoever that I need to and any changes that I make to this. If I decide that I want to kind of lengthen these, you know, maybe make some edits here, I can do that. I save the file, I close the file, I go back into Photoshop and you'll notice that that change has been made instantly. And now if I wanted to use this entire label, I could actually take this entire label here, select everything, and convert all of this to a smart object, and then I can drag it into my other file and work on this. If I want to edit this, I can just double click on the smart object icon. It opens up the entire layered file with all of the content in it. I make any edits to this, I save this file, I close this file, and I'm now back in my original file. So that's how fantastic smart objects really are. They protect your files, but you still have total use of all your layers and all your editing capabilities.